Sex Girl Hornboy, can a nuclear stress test, myocardial perfusion, yield useful information over and above the calcium score and other non-invasive tests? For the latest in health-related information and ways to save your life, check out the newsletter. Yeah, so, you know, important to understand that a nuclear stress test, it's looking at something different than a coronary artery calcium score. And the uh, nuclear stress test is looking at, you know, are there areas of your heart that are not getting adequate perfusion, not getting adequate blood flow. So this again is going to be an end stage part of the process. And it's not a very good screening test for people who are not having symptoms. There are many false negatives, false positives. It's one of these tests that I would say the healthcare system likes because they can be done. They generate a lot of income and they lead to a lot of other testing down the line. So that's why I think the nuclear stress test has become sort of popular. It's so wide widely used, but for people who are not having symptoms and are just looking to detect the early stages of disease, the nuclear stress test is not useful, whereas the coronary artery calcium scan is useful in that situation. So I've got a series of videos to talk about it a lot, how to evaluate plaque. Believe it or not, I don't recommend people hang a lot of information on Framingham. A couple of reasons. Number one, every doc thinks or she knows it, and they don't, and they don't include what they need to have, which is a more a broad broader discussion about risk factors. Number two, more recent data indicates that the risk associated with that is actually twice as high as reality, especially for women. We can go into the details of that, but it has to do with the fact that the data that it's built on is just too old now. The other common, you know, it's the steps. The Framingham leading to a stress test, leading to a going to the cath lab or an angiogram leading to a stent. You know, I call that the unholy sliding board, the unholy sliding down the hill. So slippery slope. It's a now, slippery what slope. Yep. What I do recommend is calcium score, as you've mentioned, CIMT. I get a lot of haters for that. I don't recommend that the people that use it do. I recommend it in a slightly different way. It's the only one that's going to show us, do we have cardiovascular inflammation or do is our plaque stable? And that's the focus point. The third one, and it's a newcomer, and I have been positive about what the information that is coming out, and that's CT angiogram. Any comments about that? I'm a fan of the CT angiogram as well, you know, again, used appropriately. It did not my first screening test, but certainly for people who have either a high CAC score or, you know, there's some other reason that we're concerned that they're going to have a lot of soft lack, which won't show up on the CAC scan. I think going to the CT angiogram makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I agree with you that, you know, the nuclear stress test, you know, oftentimes will lead down that slippery slope. And for people, as I said, who are, you know, not having any symptoms of heart disease. I'm not a fan of the stress test. And so CAC, CT angiogram, you know, are going to be my go-to as well. My only issue with the CIMT scan is just, it's difficult to get a good one. So yeah. if you're able to get a good one and then you're able to go back and get it reproduced over time, I think the CIMT can be very useful. But the vast majority of CIMT scans that people get are not good ones, are not reproducible over time. And therefore they just end up being not as useful. I would agree. It's the biggest issue is garbage in, garbage out. And most of the ones that get brought to me are garbage.